Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. Uh, please share, subscribe, share, like, and comment on the video lectures. Today, we'll see also another uh, iterative method for the solution of a uh, nonlinear equation, which is uh, an open iterative method uh, called uh, uh, fixed point iteration or iteration method. Um, uh, it is an open method, means that uh, they need uh, one initial approximation to find the successive approximations of the root. So the, fir the first step in fixed point iteration is rewriting the given equation f of x is equal to zero in the form x is equal to x is equal to five of x, x is equal to five of x, where x is equal to five of x is continuous in the neighborhood of the desired root. And we know that there are many ways writing f of x equal to zero in this form. For example, if you have given f of x equal to x cubed minus y of x plus one, which is equal to zero, we can write in such a way. So x is equal to x cubed plus one over five, one way. x is equal to five x minus one, the power cubic root of five x minus one. And x is equal to the square root of five x minus one over x. And let's see. So, we should find uh, a phi value. We should find the phi value uh, that satisfies, that satisfies, uh, um, we, we, we need one, func one, one of this one. We need one of this one, which satisfies uh, this condition, the derivative, the absolute value of the derivative of uh, this phi should be, should be, should be, should be less than, less than one. So if we get at least one one of this one satisfying this condition, then we take that, that function as an iterative function and we can use that function for finding the successive approximations using fixed point iteration. So clearly from the name, you can see that fixed point means that we should, we are going to find a fixed point alpha such that alpha is equal to five alpha alpha, which is equal to five alpha. So a fixed point iteration, a fixed point iteration of a function phi is a point alpha that satisfies this condition, that satisfies this condition. So using uh, the iterative function, using the iterative function, we can proceed the iteration procedure using this one, using this one. So which means that x n plus one is equal to phi of x n will be we will, will, will give the successive approximations to the root of the function. So using the iterative function phi, we can obtain f of x, so x1 is equal to phi of, phi of x naught, x2 is equal to phi of x1, let's set in such a way, xn plus one is equal to phi of xn, xn plus one is equal to phi of xn. So in this method, we need two things. One, good initial approximation. Two, the iterative function. That iterative function means that since the function have many ways of writing in the form x is equal to five x, we need one function, which is an iterative function satisfying the absolute value five of at x naught, five as x naught should be, should be less than, less than one, should be less than one. Let's use an example. Find the real root of uh, x cubed minus two x minus three, which is equal to zero, correct to say this one, please using fixed point equation here, so you can see that the question do, do, not, do, do, do not have the interval with the root line. So we can find the interval with the root line by using the intermediate value theorem. So f of zero is minus three, which is less than zero. f of one is minus, one, minus, minus four, which is less than zero. So there is no root between zero and one. f of two is one, which is greater than zero. So there is a root between one and two. There is a root between one and two. Therefore, the root of the equation lies between one and two. So we can take an initial approximation x of is equal to one or any point between zero and one, any point between zero and one. So to, 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 to find the successive approximations, we need, uh, we need, we need, we need an, iterative, an iterative function in addition to the initial approximation. We need an iterative function in addition to the initial approximation. So how can we write x cubed minus two x minus three? So in the form, uh, in the form of uh, x is equal to five of x. So x is equal to x cubed, minus three over two is one way, x is equal to three over x squared minus two is another way, 
x is equal to the cubic root of x, 2x plus 3 is another one. So which one satisfies the condition uh, that phi of uh, derivative at x naught, phi derivative at x naught is equal to, which is less than, which is less than one. The first case, the first one, uh, x is equal to phi of x is equal to x cubed minus 3 over 2, phi derivative x is 3x squared over 2. So phi derivative at x naught, x naught is one is given. So, uh, the phi uh, derivative at one is one point five, which is greater than zero, so it fails to be a iterative function. The next x is equal to three over x squared, three over x squared minus two, then phi derivative x is three times two x over x squared minus two, the whole square, and the phi derivative, uh, the absolute value phi derivative at x naught is four, which is equal to that substituting the initial approximation x naught, we get six, which is greater than zero, which also failed to be a, an iterative function. In the third one, in the last one is uh, derivative of x is equal to x, which is to the cubic root of 2x plus 3. Then the derivative is 2 over 3 times uh, 2, the, the, the cubic root of 2x plus 3, the whole square. And the, five, the absolute value of 5 derivative at x naught, which naught is 1, so it becomes 0 0.2400, which is less than 1, which is less than, which is not less than, which is less than 1, not 0, which is less than 1, which is less than 1. Hence, we obtain an iterative function. So our iterative function is x is equal to x is equal to cubic root of 2x plus 3. So using this iterative function in the initial approximation, we can find successive approximations. x1 is equal to 5 of x naught, which is equal to 2x naught plus 3 cubic root of 2x naught plus 3, which is 1.70975. And x2, which is equal to 5 of x1, which is 2x1 cubic root of 2x1 plus 3, which is 1.85856. And the third approximation x3 using x2 is 5x2, which is equal to 2x2 plus 3 cubic root, which is 1.88681. And the next approximation x4 is 5x3, which is a cubic root of 2x3 plus 3, which is 1.89208. The fifth approximation x5 is 5x4, which is a cubic root of 2x4 plus 3, which is 1.9366. And the sixth approximation x6, six, which is equal to 5, uh, x5, which is equal to 2, which is cubic root of 2x5 plus 3, which is 1.89325. And the seventh approximation x7 is obtained by 5x6, which is a cubic root of 2x6 plus 3, which is 1.8328. So you can clearly see from the two successive approximations, the six and the seventh approximation, 1.89325, 1.89328. So you can see that uh, um, the, 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 the difference between these two approximations correct for this month is the negative 0 0.0001. So hence we conclude that the real root of the equation is correct for this month place is 1.8933 correct for this month places. Let's add another example, a function which is a, a, a transcendental function, a transcendental function. Find the real root of uh, cos x is equal to 3x minus 1, correct to three decimal places. Here we have f of x is equal to cos x minus 3x plus 1, rewriting the, function, the equation. Then let's, let's uh, find f of 0, let's find the interval where the root finds. f of 0 is 2, which is greater than 0. f of pi over 2 is, is, is negative 3. 0.712398, which is less than which is less than zero. So there is a root between zero and the pi, pi over two. Zero and the pi over two. So implies that the root lies between zero and one. So let's take x naught equal to 0 0.5. Pi over two is almost 1.5 or something like that. So we can find we can take any point between zero and 1.5. We can take any initial approximation between zero and 1.5. But mostly uh, the, the 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 iterative method, the iterative fixed penetration. And method, uh, if, if, if uh, the, the absolute value, uh, mostly use the initial approximation near to the functional value, so the smallest functional value of the two initial, the, the, the roots where, the, the, the points where the roots lie. So clearly you can see that two is less than minus positive three. So near to 0 0.5, we can, we can find, near to zero, we can find 0 0.5. So now, given the equation, now using this equation, let's rewrite it in, in this form. X is equal to cos equals one minus three x, and x is equal to one over three cos x plus one. And now let's check the, the conditions that whether the, 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 the one of these equations are satisfied 
this condition phi, the, the absolute value phi derivative at x should be less than one. So using the initial approximation, x must equal 0 0.5. And the first case, x is equal to 5x, cos inverse of one minus x, then phi derivative x is minus one. This is the derivative of uh, cos inverse x is one, one, one over the square root of uh, one minus x squared. So it's a composite function. So uh, minus one times minus three over the square root of one minus one minus three over square. And phi derivative at x naught is uh, by substituting it becomes 3.464, which is greater than zero. So it, it fails to be, it fails to be a, 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 a iterative function. In the second case, uh, let x is equal to five x equal to one over three cos x plus three, then phi derivative x is minus three x over three. Minus, uh, minus sine x over three, then uh, the absolute value of phi derivative at x naught is the absolute value of sine uh, minus sine x over three. And clearly minus uh, sine x is always oscillates between minus one and one. So the absolute value of sine x is less than, less than one. So one over three, absolute value of one over three times sine x, which is less than, less than one. Hence we can take, we can take uh, x is equal to one over three cos x uh, plus one is uh, an iterative function. So using the initial approximation x naught, we can find the successive approximation. So x1 is equal to 5x0, which is 1 over 3 times cos, uh, cos x0 plus 1, which is 0 0.62581. And the second approximation is x2 is equal to 5x1, which is 1 over 3 cos x1 plus 1. So substituting x1, we get 0 0.603496. And using x2, we can find that as x3 using 5x2, which is 1 over 3 cos x2 plus 1, which is 0 0.607785. And the fourth approximation will be five using 5x3. Five we can find x4, so which is 1 over 3 cos x3 plus 1, which is 0 0.606972. So, and then the, the fifth approximation is 5x4, five 1 over 3 times cos x4 plus 1, which is 0 0.607126. So, clearly, from the two successive approximations, you can see that um, they are similar to correct to four decimal places when we are approximate to four decimal points, they are similar. So, so, so we can stop at this uh, dietary procedure at this step, so that uh, the uh, approximate root of the, 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 the given nonlinear equation is 0 0.607, correct to three decimal places. So this is how to find the, 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 the root of approximate root using fixed point iteration. So as we have said before, to, to apply the fixed point iteration, we always need we always need an iterative function. We always need an iterative function and an appropriate, an appropriate initial condition, an appropriate initial condition. The other one is algorithm for a fixed point iteration. So we start with assigning an initial gains, say x loop and, 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 and error tolerance or the degree of accuracy, EA. So rearrange the variables, say x in the, in the, in the form x is equal to 5x. And we select the one which satisfies this condition. If x is equal to 5x, uh, if, if, if x is five, five, five derivative at x naught satisfies less than one, if yes, we continue the next one. If it's not, we, we, come to an, we come to the next stage. So if it is yes, we estimate the iterative function using the iterative formula, xn is equal to 5xn minus one. Then, then if we reach the desired degree of accuracy, if we reach this degree of accuracy, if it's greater than zero, if it's greater than zero, no. If it's greater than zero, if it's greater than zero, yes, then re replace x naught by x one, then we, we, we proceed to the next iteration. And we replace x naught by x one and find x two. If, if, if it is less than zero, if it's not, no, if it is uh, less than zero, which means if we are reaching the degree of accuracy, then stop the iteration and x, xn will be the uh, root of the uh, given nonlinear equation. The given so the, the, the algorithm for the iterative method or fixed point iteration looks like this one. Thank you for watching this video.